my name's Dean. Let's talk crypto. This is where you subscribe for daily Bitcoin updates and technical analysis. We track the price of Bitcoin as a proxy for the cryptocurrency markets at large. Today is November 23rd, 2021, and Bitcoin is halfway into day four of our complex fourth wave correction. Okay, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, we've been tracking Bitcoin in this wave four, um, this Elliott wave four, in which it seems to be in a complex correction. So it's range bound. The bottom of the range is approximately $55,640. And the top is the 382 of our third wave at approximately $59,745. Okay. Um, we've had some wicking in the W wave. Uh, so when you're counting complex corrections, you don't say ABC, you say WXY or WXYXZ. This is why I said W and the W uh, wicked above the 382 and we hit a height of about, <clears throat> we hit about 59.839 and then on the pivot, meaning the ABC flat correction to, to reverse course into the X wave, we hit $60,083. Okay. So in any case, you do get some wicking and this is important to note. I did not know this, um, early on when I was trading, you know, I was under the impression and I, I learned a lot of different rules, principles, and I was under the impression that a Fibonacci level needed to be respected to the dollar, okay? Because sometimes I did see that happen, but that doesn't always happen and you do get some wicking and a very useful rule or principle that I've repeated on this channel is from WD Gann, a legendary investor and a legendary trader. This guy made over a half a billion dollars in the early 20th century, okay? Over a half a billion dollars, dollars trading, okay? He's his win rate was something like 92%. Okay. He, he, I mean, you can look this up WD Gant, he's legendary. And if you think Elliott wave theory is complicated, if you think that's involved, try studying Gant analysis, it works, but it's so much more complex, uh, a little less elegant, so much more moving parts in Gant analysis, but it works. Okay. It's a great tool. And there are some great principles from it. And one of those principles is the 50% principle. And the way I apply it is this, you'll hear people talk about the 50% principle in terms of retracement and how price needs to retrace, uh, tends to retrace to 50% uh, at least, and then to 61 point or 62%, right? But the way I use it is this, when I'm using Fibonacci levels and I find that let's say in this case, uh, I know according to Elliott wave theory, that the fourth wave cannot retrace higher than the 382 of the third wave, okay? And I measure the third wave, I pull FIBS, Fibonacci retracement tool on the third wave, and I measure out the 382, I know that some wicking can occur, okay? If I were to put stops at this level, would I put it right at the 382? No, you'd get wicked out. Would I put it right above the 382? No. According to WD GAN, the control point, the point of control for each and every level is the 50% mark, okay? Meaning if the price exceeds 50%, then you've lost the level. But up until you've exceeded that 50% mark, you're still okay. It still hasn't broken the 382 per se. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. This one thing, when I learned that, I saved so much money. I I started earning so much more. I stopped getting stopped out over and over and over again. I mean, I can give you so many examples. It's almost like a light bulb went off. It's not that I didn't have the principles and the rules before, right? I knew, okay, fourth wave between 236 and 382. I knew that but I didn't know the details and that is actually not included in 
the book I like to recommend, Elliot Waves Made Simple. And in Elliot Wave Analysis, you don't talk about that. People don't talk about uh, the 50% uh, sort of uh, principle in Elliott Wave Theory. They just talk about the, these different levels that price tends to respect. The missing piece, please remember this, is if you're going to set stops at a level, set it behind the 50% marker, right? Behind the 50% marker, whether you're longing or you're shorting, behind the 50% marker, if that level is going to be respected, then you can have some wicking up until the 50%. Usually the wicking will happen before the 50% marker. The 50% marker won't even be touched, but to be safe, a little bit behind the 50% marker. If you're going to lose the level, you're going to lose the level anyway. So there's no point in setting it one Fibonacci level above, just set it beyond the 50% marker. I hope everybody understands this. If you're getting value, please like the video, share this with other people who you think may uh, receive uh, sort of some value, some alpha from this and subscribe if you're not subscribed. Okay, let's get on to what Bitcoin is doing. Like I said in the beginning, fourth day in this complex correction. Again, for those of you not subscribed, there are such things as complex corrections in Elliott Wave Theory. Complex corrections, you don't count ABC as regular corrections. You count WXY or WXYZ. And the whole idea fundamentally of a complex correction is that it lasts longer than a, a simple correction. And it's a little more involved, as the name implies. Okay, So our simple correction, I'm not going to measure it again. I'm pretty sure I remember. It's four days and 16 hours, this two wave. It was a simple correction, four days, 16 hours. Fourth waves tend to have complex corrections if the, the two wave was simple. And that is just following the principle of uh, complementarity or uh, of balance or alternation, as they call it in Elliott Wave Theory, right? Simple, com uh, simple correction in one wave, complex correction in the other, right? There's only two corrective waves in uh, an impulse the two and the four. So here we're getting the complex correction. If that lasted four days and 16 hours, this is going to last, <clears throat> based on my back testing, at least three and a half times as long, or if not twice as long, okay? So four days, 16 hours, we're expecting something like six to eight days of retracement. We've already gotten four days and 12 hours. So we expect approximately, what, uh, 50, 60 hours, 60 more hours. Yeah, something like that. About two more days, two, two and a half more days of, of this correction. And now let's look at W. So W did, W took approximately, including the pivot. And I'm, a, so this is the W correction and this is the pivot into X. So I'm counting that as well. Or let's, Let's leave the pivot as part of X. Actually, that's technically more correct. So one day in 20 hours, okay, it took for W to, to execute. For X, starting at the end of W, for X to complete, it took one day in 16 hours. So these corrections, you can see, are taking approximately one day, 18 hours, okay? So one day, 18 hours, that's... Uh, 40, okay, my math, one day, 18 hours, 24 plus 18, 34, 42, okay, 42 hours approximately, okay, so we just started, and, and I want to note this, we all know the three guidelines of a WXY or a complex correction, one, it's got a slant in the direction of the correction, right, we're getting that slanting, right, if you pull out your regression trend, you see that's not the slanting I'm looking for. It's actually in the opposite direction. I hope you see it. Let me just draw it out really quickly. The slanting is going to be like this. Yeah, do you see that? It's and basically W, the origination point of W should be the lowest, and then the end of Y should be the highest. Okay, so it should slant like that. 
and you are getting that. And I, I said two videos ago that sometimes in uh, complex corrections, I've seen the, the, the origination point of X or actually the end point of X retrace beyond the origination point of W, but it depends how you count these waves. And let me give you an example. Let's go on the 30 minute chart, see a little more detail. So do you see W started here? So technically speaking, X should end above the starting point of W, right? And then Y should end above the ending point of W. So let's say this is X, right? Boom, boom. And then boom, boom, boom. That was the end technically of X. So it right, right above the starting point of W. What you get here, this pivot, remember the pivot, the pivots are part of the, 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 um, the subsequent wave. So just like we just count, we didn't count this pivot as W, right? We counted this pivot as X. This, this is the small pivot for W. Boom, you get W. W ends here. Then X starts. This is the pivot for X. The pivot is basically a flat correction, right? A, B, C. And so you got X was comprised of a zigzag or what is this? Yeah, this is a zigzag correction, right? A flat or a zigzag, okay, for the pivot. Zigzag correction. And then another zigzag correction. And then another zigzag correction. Or actually, wait, A, B, C. Yeah, yep. And another zigzag correction. So you see, when you talk about complex waves and complex corrections and the fact that you can have complex corrections within complex corrections, in X alone, you have one, one, two, three. That's one, one, two, three. That's two, one, two, three. That's three. You have three, actually. You have three complex corrections in X, okay? And it's pretty much, again, uh, one of another principle, WD GAN principle is don't seek 100% accuracy. You, you know, the idea of X ending above Y, this is essentially at the same level, if not, you know, technically above, we have a little bit of wicking here. So this, this counts, okay? This right here, what you see here is part of Y. I've counted as part of Y, and I'm going to show you in a second why. Okay, so that's, so this is uh, another example. Why, why am I bringing up WD GAN? It's, the more you know, the more you make, okay? Elliott wave theory is great, and I use it every day on this channel, as you all know. It's very powerful. I think it's the most elegant system, but there's always some blind spots. There's always some places where, oh, wow, it's hard to count the, those Elliott waves. I'm going to use pattern analysis, or, oh, wow, I, I need to know the princip principle of, uh, you know, the 50% retracement. I need to know the principle of 100% uh, not looking for a hundred percent accuracy, uh, because that helps that informs my Elliott wave theory that makes my Elliott wave analysis that much better. So this is why I encourage you all don't necessarily try to be a jack of all trades. Don't necessarily, uh, try to use everything right in, in so far as you don't have a main tool, right? Have a main tool, but you know, have a, use your sword or your battle ax and then have some ninja stars and like, you know, some karate and taekwondo or jujitsu or whatever. Do you see what I'm saying? You have your main weapon and then you have these complementary things. So if somebody comes hand to hand, you can fight them hand to hand. If somebody's at a distance, you can throw things, right? You can throw your, your, your ninja stars or you can use projectiles like a gun or whatever, but you have a main, main tool that you've mastered that you really went deep into. This is how you gain your edge, okay? And this is, again, going back to the whole theory of this channel. The more you know, you, the more you make. We don't just learn for the sake of learning. Obviously, this thing, this stuff is fascinating, especially if you like math and theory and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, we're trying to make money. And the way we make money is by knowing this stuff, reading charts better than the average person, and then being able to uh, accurately and consistently predict 
price action based on what it's just done or what it's done in the past. Okay. So moving on. So X is complex, right? You have one, two, three. Now we start with Y. I believe Y begins here. Okay. And Y, you have a big wick to the downside. <clears throat> These wicks uh, typically to find the bottom base or to find the, um, how do you say, the, the, the bottom range, the, you know, just kind of range finding here. And then it starts A, B, actually, this is not A, B. This is, this is a C wave. This is a C wave. Okay. Actually, it goes A, B, C. This is a C wave. Why do I know that this is a C wave? It's because if I take my fibs, first of all, I know it's a C wave because it's impulsive. And this is a lot of price action that's very impulsive, very quick. Okay. So I know we're in an impulsive wave. And I feel like if this is an impulsive wave, then this has to be wave one. If I pull the Fibonacci retracement tool, I see that this wave one, whoops, I pulled it wrong. If I pull it from the start of the wave to the end of the wave, I see that we've come back to the 618, wicked a little bit beneath the 618. Again, I'll draw your attention to where did it wick? So wave one is supposed to respect the 618, right? Not, not go below the 618. Did it? Yes and no. It wicked below, but it wicked maybe a third of the way into the 618 Fibonacci level. It didn't hit the 0.5, nor did it retrace beyond the 0.5. That's why my stops, I'm actually long right now. My stops were below the 0.5. My stops were literally right here. Did I sweat when I was making my entry? Yeah. Do you sweat? Did I sweat less than I did the first time I did it? Yeah. The more you do it, the less you sweat, right? High performance sport. Trading is a high performance sport. So now we're long and we expect this to be one. That was second wave retracement. I expect a three wave, a four wave, and a five wave, five wave. Where is this going? Is this going to the top of our range? I believe so based on the length of one and just doing the Fibonacci retracements, <coughs> sorry, extensions. I think that this is going to go to the end and this is going to complete our uh, complex correction. Uh, when? I don't know. But it's an impulsive wave, so I believe sooner than later. Can it be another sort of corrective wave? Absolutely. Am I going to monitor this uh, this trade? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I'm going to monitor it like a hawk because I'm in a danger zone. I'm in a no trade zone, technically. I'm in a very difficult zone. If you can trade this, you can trade anything. If you can trade a complex correction, correction you can trade anything. Because look at the volatility here. This is where exchanges get all their money. This is where most people get stopped out or liquidated. It's going up and then going down, going up and then going down very quickly, very quickly. Look at this. All of this volatility, most people can't handle it, okay? So that's pretty much it for Bitcoin from me. Uh, I will remind you today is a live stream. I'm going to be live streaming a little earlier today, not at 5.30 or 5.45 as as usual, but at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I hope to see you all there. I hope you have a great day, um, and I'll see you later.